an expert in cultivating effective leadership, personal effectiveness, and relationship management, using faith-based business and social principles as vehicles for effecting positive change. Ace is also a social entrepreneur with a passion to draw upon business values in preferring solutions to social and cultural problems. Ace is a speaker, teacher, trainer, and certified coach under the John C. Maxwell Leadership Certification Program and licensed as a team member to equip in areas of leadership, growth, influence, communication, vision, execution, and success. E.C. Geneba was the resident pastor and chief administrator of this present house, 2013 to 2015, a church which is the leading part of a network of ministries and non-profits known as the House of Freedom, of which she was a board member under the unique leadership of Dr. Tony Rappel. He called, she is a convener of Mantle of Deborah, a conference that seeks to empower women across the African continent, drawing thousands of women, both in religious and marketplace settings from Nigeria, Kenya, and South Africa. People of, People of Institute Network, P.O. Pastor E.C. Genegba is the lead of People of Influence, P.O.I., a ministry set up as a network of believers globally, saddled with the charge of establishing the kingdom of God on earth in various institutions by raising a spirit-filled, kingdom-driven generation. P.O.I.'s mandate, E.C. Benedicta. Hallelujah! Praise Jesus! Hallelujah! Praise God! Oh Lord, we bless you. Lord, we thank you. Father, we thank you for your presence, your sweet, sweet presence that is in this place. I thank you, precious Holy Spirit, for the weight of your government that is in the room. I thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are the saving hand of Zion. You are the one that reaches to us, O oh God, out of the deep places of our lives, out of the places of darkness, out of the places of shame, out of the places of frustration. You are the one that reaches out to us. You are the one that reaches out to us in the wisdom of God. And you show us the multiple dimensions of wisdom. You show us the multiple expressions of understanding on how understanding is able to reach us, O oh God, irrespective of where we may be. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, because I perceive that today, even in the power of your wisdom, you are about to pull your children out of strange places. You are about to pull them out of strange addictions and out of strange um, covenants that are speaking that they did not even know was speaking. Father, we just say, have your way in the midst of your people. Father, do the very things, the very things that you have proclaimed you will do. You say when you walk into a room, oh God, that you come with the strength of your word and then you begin to take the hearts of men and you take the areas that are broken and you begin to re-establish them by the power of your word. So we open up this place to the activities of heaven. We open up this place to spiritual surgeries. We open up this place, oh God, to transformation. We open up this place to spiritual heart transplants. We decree and we declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that the things that the enemy had done, that he thought he had cemented and he had sealed. Father, we decree that in the mighty name of Jesus, that there is a pulling down of stronghold and there is a shattering, oh God, of ancient demonic mindsets. We decree by the power of the Holy Ghost that your people are being restored and being repositioned into the very places that you had allocated for them from the foundation of the world. We are not the people who give up our inheritance we are not the people who back down so that the enemy can take a seat we decree and we declare that there is a force that is released out of Zion this morning that gives your people the necessary strength capacity and strategy that is needed to pursue and to overtake and recover all that was stolen in the mighty name of Jesus we draw a line in the sand this morning we stand with God the maker of the heavens and the earth we decree and and we declare that the purposes of our king are established in the lives of his people in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout amen. 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 
Shalamia to Kopele Diska. Father, we release the intelligence of Shalom in this room. We decree and we declare that nothing is missing and nothing is broken because according to your name being Shalom, you have the capacity to walk into the life of a person and the things that we're missing, even in their genetics, you have the ability to restore. And so, Father, even in the bodily manner, we declare healing in the name of Jesus. We declare shalom in the name of Jesus. We declare that nothing missing in the bodies of your people. We begin to speak to cell. We begin to speak to blood vessels. We begin to speak to the brain. We begin to speak to the tummies. I speak the healing of God over your body. In the mighty name of Jesus. Kaneme Toba Sante. Rakento Biska Pianta Pezo Kila Bahat. We declare that the atmosphere of Zion is superimposed over the atmosphere that surrounds you right now and we declare that the intelligent will of God that has the ability to bypass the infrastructures of darkness is coming into your life right now in the name of Jesus we open up this room to the technologies of Zion we decree and we declare that whatsoever is available in the throne of God is available unto us right now but the power of the Holy Spirit the power of the Holy Spirit that is quick, that is effective in the name of Jesus for how can a vessel break out in living waters if the vessel does not have the capacity to contain living waters we decree and we declare that our containers are being fixed by the power of God your soul, your mind, your spirit has the capacity to contain God in the name of Jesus in all ramification of God our God is intelligent and effective he will not create a vessel that is made to carry his image and likeness if the vessel does not have the capacity to bear him accurately I say to you by the authority of Jesus that you have what it takes to contain God I say to your soul that it has what it takes to contain God I say to your spirit that it has what it takes to contain God I say to your body that it contains God in the name of Jesus Come on, somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. We step into time. We step into yesterday. For the Bible declares that our God is Alpha and Omega. And as long as we stand in the image of God, we have the ability to enter into the dateless past. We decree that in the name of Jesus that anything in yesterday that was written, that was set up, maybe by hell and darkness concerning your life, and they sit in hope that they will receive a reward word of the pronouncement of death. Today in the name of Jesus we begin to challenge those voices. We begin to challenge those expectations. We say that in the mighty name of Jesus we stand with the decree of the most high God that the expectations of hell and the expectations of Satan and the expectations of darkness no matter how intelligently put together they are they will not stand in Jesus name. We release the sphere of God's jurisdiction and legislation over this room. We say that the words that we speak, they shall be heard and remembered. Not only on earth, but in the heavens of heavens. I say to you once again, that the expectations of hell and darkness, no matter how intelligent the documents are, they are consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. For I perceive that somebody is being set up today for destiny. There is ordination going on in the room. There is ordination and commissioning going on in this room. For the Spirit of God is set to release His Spirit over a generation. Father, we call it forth. 
Father, we call them forth. Father, we call them forth. Right now in the name of Jesus. We call them forth. Right now in the name of Jesus. We lay our hands, oh God, upon everyone that you have laid your hand upon. Masunde Kai, no one shall be missing from this army. In the name of Jesus. Ayale Koja. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Lana Kepai. Kilone Kepai. Vendele Mekotoya. Shamba Baba Baba Kiriosa. Kiriono Mokumba Radasa. Paliato Kasapai. For the Spirit of God sends his mighty open door in this room. And the Lord says, anyone that thirst, come in, come in, come in. Anyone that seeks to go higher, come in, come in, come in. Anyone that seeks to see me like never before, enter in, says the Spirit of God. Frentune Biasco Pelatai, Mirondo Copele Duscomiatai. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Alle de Kele Bashana. We position ourselves, O God, for the move of your Spirit. We position ourselves, O God, for the unveiling of the new day. We position ourselves, oh God, under the now stream of Zion. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For indeed, out of our bellies shall flow rivers, 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 rivers of living waters. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, rivers of living waters. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you because we are merely living out the things that you have completed. So we only ask, Lord, that you help us to accurately translate the things that we have already lived out in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Take your seats this morning as we run quickly through the word of God. And I need you to stay with me because I don't know what DDK came to drop here that she's using to redirect my message. But I will go where the river has been going. Yeah. Because when you swim with the current, you are bound to go faster. You know, and when I look at the topic that was put together, even in, for the entire conference, I'm thinking to myself, how are we supposed to preach this message? You understand? And finish it today because DDK has, is like, um, you talk about the rivers of living waters and then you talk about the office of the woman and you collect it to a kingdom leadership conference. Thank you, ma. 
There is so much embedded in it and I need you to please stay with me this morning. Because like I said, I perceive really strongly that God is commissioning some people here today where you will talk about your story 20 years from now. You will talk about this day and how the Spirit of God came upon you mightily and completely transformed your heart and gave you a roadmap for a time and a generation. I believe that's what the Lord is doing. You know, <clears throat> I'm teaching about the office of the kingdom woman, the office of the spiritual woman. The world in which we, st we stand today has got so many things that have been woven together by darkness. And it is almost as though we are standing in a time where we see a picture of the things that darkness has been weaving for centuries now. If you have eyes in the spirit, it will be a time that you would almost be discouraged. Because when you realize the amount of calculation and the amount of strategic thinking and positioning that hell has done, it looks like it's almost impossible to infiltrate their ranks. It's so tight in every area, in every corner, whether it be in the lives of our children, in businesses, even in ministry and church. Darkness has been able to establish certain infrastructures that guarantee them a reward and profit. So when you look at it, you say to yourself sometimes, how can we possibly? But the Bible says the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the seeming strong. But there is something about the one who holds time and who holds purposes in his hand. The moment he is ready, he combines the two together in the form of vessels that he releases and he interjects seasons with such people. I believe that we're about to see a release of vessels that have been brewed by God. Vessels that have been carefully prepared before the foundations of the earth and they will be the ones that interject the works of darkness. And people will say, how is it possible for one man to be like a nation? And how is it possible for one woman to operate like a city? It is because the Spirit of God would cause the throne of God, the intelligence of his throne, to rest within such people. And every move they make will seem like the move of a nation. We seem like the move of a multitude of people. Why? Because it is possible for one to be as a thousand in the eyes of God. God is about to do these things with you. If you will present yourself. So when you talk about the office of a kingdom or a spiritual woman, we are not talking about people who go to church, no. Because there are many people who go to church who are in departments, but they are not spiritual. For you to be spiritual, it means that you have come into one and awakening that there is more that meets the eyes than you can see. For you to be spiritual, you have entered into the place where Jesus was saying that do not worry about what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear. Because there is a category of people that spend their lives worrying about these things. And when you fall into the trickery of hell to keep your attention, your passion on these things, what happens is that you are automatically subjected to the rulership of the prince of the air. And I believe Pastor Chitok will teach a little bit more about this when he comes. So God is releasing a people who are spiritual, who have learned to step away from the influence and manipulation of the material. So even though they dwell in the material, even though they rule in the material, even though they rule from the material, yet they have a higher place where they get their energy, where they get their strength, where they get their wisdom, so that the material is consistently under their control. That's what God is doing with you. That's what it means to be spiritual. Every time you sit in a room and you hear a conversation, you hear the conversation and you hear the other conversation that is not being heard. Because what overlays any physical conversation is a much larger spiritual conversation. 
And your ability to hear what is not being spoken is what puts you in control. Spiritual. Spiritual. In Acts chapter 2, the apostle Peter got up and he began to say something that was said 400 years ago. And he said, for these are not drunken, as you suppose. Seeing it, it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days. It shall come to pass in the times when we turn on the TV and we are afraid. It shall come to pass in the times when we think about Disney and what is being released. We are afraid for our children. It shall come to pass in that time. It did not come at another time. It came in the time when it is almost as though hell has taken over and there is no hope for us. It shall come to pass in the time when the iniquity and the corruption of our nation has reached its peak. It will wait for the time when darkness is blowing its victory horns and they are declaring how they will position their men in power. It shall come to pass that in that time, the Lord will release a strategy from heaven and the Lord will pour out his spirit he will not release droplets of his spirit, he will not release just little measures of his spirit but it will be an outpouring of his spirit he will release all the fullness of himself in the multiplicity of his power and his strength and he will pour out his spirit upon whom? All flesh he will pour it out upon you it will point out upon your children. He will point out upon your drivers. He will point out upon your daughters and your sons. And he will point out upon the pastors. He says he will point out upon our flesh. He says, and they shall be marked by something. He says, your daughters will begin to prophesy. I want to stop right there. There is something about the prophetic that necessitates that any man who can prophesy on behalf of God is a man who is able to hear, see, and understand the movements of God. So when it says your daughters will prophesy, listen to me, it doesn't mean your daughters will begin to sing songs that when they are singing, they are shaking. That's not what it means to prophesy. I can prophesy without moving. My eyes will not blink. Nothing will shake. I will prophesy to you while I'm eating pounded yam. I will prophesy to you while I'm drawing my eye like, uh, my mascara. Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you see, prophecy comes from a place where even your physical mind has been overwhelmed yeah. by the mindset of God. That way you want to interpret a situation. You interpret it the way the eyes of God sees it, hears it, and understands it. To so prophesy is when the weight of God's spirit and nature is laid upon the weight of yours and your own weight now grows up by the orchestration of the word to be able to accommodate the weight of God. So on the physical outlook, you look the same. But in the spirit, your spirit has stretched and expanded to the point where you break the usual boundaries of spirit and soul and you begin to go on a consistent journey with the Holy Ghost and you begin to venture into realms of the spirit so that when the earth begins to define the boundaries of God by using planets and universes you define the boundaries of God by the journeys you make with him so one man can journey into 10 millennials ago why because you have entered into a place where the natural habitat of your spirit is the mind and the heart of the father you can see anything you can hear anything you can contain anything but the thing about the prophetic is that by reason of that same Holy Ghost you then have the ability to distill the mysteries that you hear into tangible words that men can receive and they can use as blueprints for days to come. I say you will prophesy. I say something will happen to your spirit. The Lord will not let you go until you break those boundaries. I say Baba will not let your soul go until he fully receives the measure of God's emotion. I say you will prophesy. You will prophesy in government. You will have the ability to interpret leadership and throws the way that God interprets it. I call an end to the days of carnality. I call an end to the days when you are overwhelmed by the broken systems of this world. I say to you by the power of the Holy Ghost that your spirit has the ability to rise and to venture into the heights of God in the name of Jesus. Alekelia Kato, Bon Shante Kehigaha. 
So when you see the weight of darkness in our time, where should you keep your eyes? On the hills of God's promise. Because something is coming upon his daughters. And it's called the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy. Prophecy is great here to encourage us. But prophecy is powerful out there to rebuild the world. We need prophesying IT managers. We need prophesying industrialists. We need prophesying farmers who can look and say, yes, a famine is coming, but I have the technology by which I will build silos that will preserve food for generations to come. Prophets everywhere. The reason why God is doing this is because everything on the earth must reflect God. God is not coming for a broken picture of himself. He's coming for a perfect picture. So when you think about who God is, just give me a minute. Let me talk to you about this eternal system of all creation. Because many times we underrate God. And we underrate what he means. And that's why the power of many people is limited here. You see, I love everything that is Christian and godly. But my spirit abhors anything that tries to impose religion on the truth of God. I will meet the expectations of men, but I will never break the boundaries of truth. Because if you don't receive truth in its fullness, it will limit your expression of God in your time. The reason why it seems sometimes as if generation upon generation is on a religious loop is because no one ever rises up to say, Baba, is there more in you? Apart from the way my father Abraham described you, how can I describe you in my time? The audacity to believe that God is yet speaking. When you take a look at creation and the intentionality attached to every part of it, you are bound to conclude that it is all a product of a very, very intentional God. He is not just any God. It is obvious he is the extremely intelligent being, one who is deliberate about the big picture of all realities, but he is also the one that sweats the small details. He is the supreme being, supreme in configuration, Supreme in experience, supreme in vision, supreme in authority, and supreme in dominance. Why am I saying these things to you? So that when you enter into who he is, you can enter into who you are. You see, with this in mind, you don't understand why it is unwise to play down on anything that this great system of life and living creates. It is unwise to imagine that the very, very things that God stamps completion on, that they are negligible and inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. It was when woman came, that was when God put his stamp of completion. Now, let the journey begin. How can you imagine that the one that marked it is complete is negligible? How can you imagine that the one without whom God could not rest and he kept saying, something is yet missing. And it was when he came, he said, aha, now we can move on. How can you then imagine that you are a negligible being upon the earth? It is impossible. It is impossible. From the moment she physically manifested in the mix of creation, the entire dynamics changed. It is almost as though the woman was both the signal of God's completion and also the trigger that forced the enemy into compulsive attack. There is something about the woman. There is something about the bride that marks God's eternal victory over the enemy of his throne. This is not me speaking from a feminist place. This is a spiritual statement of truth that is backed by facts and figures from scriptures. All over the Bible, you see how at different points in time, God described different things as she. We see how God even described sometimes himself as a woman, as a mother. That's to tell you that she's not inconsequential. The church is referred to as the bride of Christ. 
Hey, this church that Jesus came to die for, this church that Jesus risked his throne for, he risked it all. Why? Just to get a bride, a woman for himself. What is it about the image and the picture of female? You see how Israel was referred to many times as his bride. Even wisdom is referred to as she, as her. And you see how the enemy is always trying to create a parallel picture of the powerful imagery that God is raising. You see it in people like Jay-Z Bell. And you see how in the book of Revelation it speaks about mystery Babylon. And is referred to as a woman. That system that sucks people in. And has the capacity to keep all of humanity from the manifestation of God's fullness. Referred to as a woman. Why? Because the enemy understands that there is an engineering of this vessel that makes it possible for it to play a role in the foundation and end of the matters of God. So I need you to stay with me and understand the wisdom of God that is locked in the semi brokenness and fragility of your being. In Galatians 4 verse 21 to 31, Paul refers to woman as the symbol of the old covenant and the new covenant. What is it about her that has the capacity to manifest as the shadow of God and as the image of his fullness? She manifested in the form of the Old Testament in shadow as prophecies, but manifested in the New Testament as the embodiment of Christ. There is something about what you represent. There is something about who you represent. Your very image triggers the enemy. And it is a reminder to him of the things that are to come upon him. Because the Bible looked at, the God looked at Satan and said to him, the seed of the woman, I promise you, is the very thing that will take you down. When he said to Satan, he didn't say the seed of the woman will bruise the tail of the Satan. He says it will bruise the head of the serpent. Why? Because the head is where intelligence dwells. The head is where technology comes from. The head is where reasoning comes from. The head is the seat of power of any being. The Bible declares that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That word that was used for beginning is the Hebrew word that is the same for head. So the Bible says in the head of God, he created the heavens and the earth. So when the, the serpent head that the seed of the woman will bruise your head. What he heard is that the seed of the woman will take out anything that you can create from the beginning till the end. He saw the finalization of his life and existence the moment he looked at the woman. Every time Satan looks at you, he doesn't see a weak girl who was raped. As a matter of fact, he raped you so that you will never arrive at this revelation. Every time Satan looks at you, he doesn't see a woman whose husband is constantly cheating on her. He sees one who is a threat to his kingdom. He sees one who when she wake up, wakes up, she has the ability to meet him head for head. You need to understand. You don't fight head with leg. You fight head with head. Jesus said I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. That means if the gates of the church will not prevail against the gates of hell that means it's a war of gates. It's a war of leadership. So the sin of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. That's to tell you that the soul of, this, the, of the, what the woman will bring forth is going to have strength like the head of the serpent. <laughs> your movements, your journey, your future has the capacity to not negotiate with hell, but to break down the works of hell. So when you wake up and you tomorrow you say, you know what, the Lord is leading me to ABC. Your very steps, the steps of the seed that comes out of you are the soul of every movement that God commands you to make is the technology and the ability to bruise Satan's infrastructure. I need you to hear me. Because the day you decide that you will sit in one place, even that decision to sit as a woman, to birth that ability to rest in itself is a strategy of Zion. So you begin to understand that there is something, this interplay of male, female, woman, bride. It is almost as though the entire creation is like a cosmic romance story of one God, great creator, consistently trying to woo, to save, to receive a people unto himself. My question to you is where do you stand in the midst of that? You need to understand that everything that God does, he does with Jesus. 
So you cannot talk about being a spiritual woman or a kingdom woman without talking about being a woman that is embedded in Christ. When you close your eyes to pray, please don't pray like the Pharisees pray. Don't just say, baraka, baraka, take a lebo kosha, so that you will sound loud and powerful. What use is it? It is good to raise your voice, but let it be that as your voice is raising, it is in direct correlation to the works that are happening inside you. So that the moment you see me crouch down and I am screaming, I'm not screaming because I want you to scream. I am screaming because my spirit is struggling to bear what it is saying and struggling to enter what it is receiving. You cannot speak about a woman without speaking about her being embedded in Christ. Embedded. We will enter the garden a little bit. But before we get there, let that scripture in John 7 lead us there. Because I'm speaking to the next generation of people who will carry the mantle of God and will run faster than ever before. This is why when God, Jesus stood up, he was talking about people embedded in him. Why? Because he's the living waters. Jesus is the living. I need you to understand what it means. You look at this glass of water. And imagine if he says this is living water. That means what I'm holding in my hand is not just cup and a fluid. That means this fluid has the ability to decide it wants to sit down. It can talk back at me. If I drink this fluid and it enters my body, it can invade my cells. It can either cause me to be sick or cause me to be empowered. That means this fluid has the ability to create its own atmosphere. That means this fluid has a spirit. If I pour it on my body, I can be possessed by the spirit of the fluid. I needed to understand what it means for him to be living waters. So when you sing that song, you are not singing nice melody. You are releasing the dimensions of the God life into the earth. You are releasing dimensions of the living spirit inside you into the earth. Jesus stood up in John 7 and he began to say, in the great day of the feast, and why is this important? Because I will end with the technology of the river. Because I found out that many times we cry for the river, but we don't even know how to send the river forth. We don't know how the river can break out. And I pray that God today will release that intelligent plan. Jesus said to them in the great day of the feast, he cried out and he said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Anyone that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his bellies will flow rivers of living waters. He says, but he spoke he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost is not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. <clears throat> but we are recipients of the things that have already happened. So when you look at the scripture, you then realize that there are two dimensions of engaging Jesus. If you indeed will be a spiritual woman, if you indeed will walk in the office that God has preordained for you, you must first engage Christ on these two dimensions. Number one, the dimension of thirst and hunger. The dimension of desire. It is impossible to enter into anything without first hunger being hungry, thirsty, or desirous of that thing. And we see this manifesting first in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. My brother, feel free to play. Eh? It's okay, follow me. We see it in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And how the very things that the woman evoked upon the earth came by reason of her desire. Desire is not that I saw fine boy and I like him. Desire is a tangible, tangible expression in the spirit realm. Desire is a tangible structure in the spirit realm. Desire is a spiritual system that has the ability to pull into itself and pull into its environment and atmosphere all kinds of substances that surround it. Anywhere desire enters, desire can build a community. Anywhere desire enters, desire can raise an army. Anywhere desire enters, desire can build a home and an abode. Desire has 
has the ability to open gates and doors. A desire has the capacity to actually break the will of God. Because God can desire a thing. But if the desire of man upon the earth does not align with the desire of God in the heavens, then the heavens will have to step back so that the desire of man on the earth will manifest. Desire is a partnership tool which with humanity partners with God. And the moment the cable of desire of man connects with the cable of desire of God, there is an electri electrifying that goes on in the spirit realm. And that which is released in the spirit realm can either produce life or produce death. I need you to understand the next time that something is fighting for your desire and something is fighting for your emotion, you need to understand that Satan is unlocking a capacity within you and without your authorization, he is using the resources of your humanity to release for itself what it needs to destroy humanity. So you need to understand when James 4 began to say, from where do the wars and the fightings around you come from? Do they not come from the desires within you that war in your members? That means the war and the fightings in our world is a product of the war and the fightings of our desire within us. So if a man can curb his innermost desire and bring it under the government of God, that man in himself does not only become a temple but becomes a military base for Zion. For the desire of man is like a sign and seal document. The desire of man combined with the blood of Jesus has the ability to cause a holy invasion to happen over a generation. It is desire that takes a man from nation to nation and the very things that you saw days ago, you can bet it in the physical, you can cause there to be an actualization and people gravitate towards your holy righteous desire because you know how to combine desire with government. Desire. Desire. Passion. Hunger and thirst. God was not saying, Jesus was not talking about I want to drink water thirst. Jesus was talking about a person that enters into a place where you realize how patched your soul is without him. When you realize how dry your inner man is. When you are not able to climb the heights of the mountains of his will. Desire grows from level to level. Thirst rises from level to level. There is a thirst that can give you salvation. But there is another kind of thirst that can call you into the council room of heaven. It is a kind of desire that makes it possible for a man to be able to peep and see the handwritings of God that have not been published in his time. It was that kind of desire that made Enoch the man we now call him today. That made it possible from end to pass, walk away from the normal pathway of his time and enter into an eternal pathway with God. I am telling you about the kind of desire that can help you conduct your own deliverance service. And when you enter into the place of your prayer chamber and you say, God, I see myself and I see that I have fallen. But I also see another picture of your perfect will for me. And I know it is possible for me to rise from the brokenness and the Mara clay of my life and to ascend into the heights of your goodness. So I desire to take off the garments of iniquity. I desire to take off the garments of shame. I desire to pull the garments of sickness and I press into the place of fullness. Ah, desire. You will enter your prayer closet. You will come out a different man. You will enter a pauper and you will rise up as a king. Why desire? Ayakonosa, fight for your passion. Fight for the things that are painting a picture of what you should desire. Why do you think the social media and the news is filled with all kinds of passionate stories? They call it gripping stories. They call it breaking news. Why? Because every time the news is released, it breaks your boundaries on your inside. Breaks the boundaries of your soul. So that you start to hunger and thirst for things that were not naturally configured inside of you by God. You find a man that can manage his desire and can enter into the wisdom and the understanding of how desire works. You find a man that God can use to take nations. I'm not talking about I want it. He says this is the reason why you don't get what you want. Because you don't ask. You don't ask because you don't even know how to activate desire. He says when you now do, you do it from a place of the things you want to lavish on yourself. Not from the place of the things that God can lavish on the world. He says, you know, you don't receive it. But when a man bows his desires to God, 
God can trust that man. God can trust that woman. That is the kind of kingdom woman we're talking about. Why do you think when they were leaving the garden, God looked at the woman and said to her, I'm going to tell you something that will help you for all ages. By reason of this thing that happened, by reason of you subjecting your desire to the picture that Satan painted for you, automatically your desire will now be overridden by what man wants. He wasn't just talking about boy. He wasn't just talking about husband. He was talking about that carnal state where you feel subjected consistently to the rulership of this world. But God was also giving her a clue and redemption. And saying that but a time will come when that seed will enter you. He says you, you will speak to another woman and a baby inside her will leap because you are no longer a vessel of lustful dead desire. Something is now growing from inside of you that has the ability to trigger life inside of other women. Somebody say, Lord, I submit my desire to you. Come on, say it. I submit my desires to you. I bring my passion, my thirst, and my hunger under your government. I do not take my hand or stretch it to take anything that I want just because I want it. I only stretch my hand when I see you stretch your hand, God. In the name of Jesus. There are many things I could go into today, but I will rush. But I need you to keep your eye on one word called mare. is a Hebrew word. And it's the word that was used <coughs> when the Bible says, and she saw that the fruit was good for food. Profitable to make her wise. It was good for her belly. She saw it. Let me tell you, the trigger of desire is vision. Without vision, there is no passion. This is why Jesus spent everything. God spent everything that he is, what? To write an entire book that paints pictures for us. Because the moment you can see it, Elijah said to Elisha, it's not about a thousand prayer meetings. There are prophets who were at my prophet's college before you. He says, but if you can see me leave, you can get what is upon my life. There are things I can give to you, but sight is what must be grown and cultivated in you. So Marie was what she did. When David saw Bathsheba, the Bible says, and he married her that she was beautiful. Now, every time the word mare is used, it is used not to explain normal sight. Like, oh, I see you sitting on that chair. That's not mare. Mare is when you have a deeper insight into a thing that is present before you. And you also have an understanding of its inner workings and what it has the capacity to produce. So when the Bible describes the enemy taking Jesus to a high mountain and showing him all the kingdoms of this world, he was given him he was showing him what he was doing what Mare. he Jesus did not just see houses with light Jesus saw the future of all the earth he saw our time he saw the times to come he saw the glory of social media he saw everything so when the woman stood before a tree and she saw that it was good for food she did not just see food what she saw she saw the nourishment of popularity she saw the nourishment of being famous and the glory of exaltation she saw things that nobody had, mankind had never imagined before. And she said, my God, I, I have to have it. I want to ask you a question. Who is painting the pictures you live your life by? You cannot be a spiritual woman if you have not learned to effectively cultivate the pictures before you. You cannot be a kingdom woman if you are not consistently conscious of the images that have been imprinted on your soul. The people that stand in front of you. The people that sit around you. The conversations that your ear hear. All of these things are consistently painting pictures and they are fine-tuning your desire. This is why above the voices of the world, the word of God must be the loudest voice in your soul. Because it is the loudest voice in your soul that con chose the path of your desire. Jesus said for any man to be able to enter into this dimension of the river that we need now, he must desire. And the second thing, the second dimension by which you engage Christ, 
is the dimension of expression, creation, and restoration. Why is this important? He says, first, come and take the water. He says, but after that, you must partner with me to create. You must partner with me on the level of expression because the water that goes inside you must break out of you. The water that I fill you with is sufficient to not only nourish you, but it must nourish the earth. There is an expectation of that which I place within you. It is for it to fill the whole world. This is why in the book of Genesis, the Bible spoke about the river. And that the river flowed from Eden. And what, where did it water first? It watered the garden first. And then after it watered the garden, it had to water the whole earth. Hear me, people of God. The church is not conscious enough about this second dimension of engagement. We are very conscious about the first dimension, which is the dimension of thirst. But we are not conscious about the dimension of breaking forth. In fact, when we speak about breaking forth, we think about it in light of how much we get blessed. Hear me. You cannot be a kingdom woman if you don't understand the power of sacrifice. Because for you to release what is inside of you, to no benefit to yourself, you must be a person that understands sacrifice. You must be a woman that understands how to sow in this time-bound world, understanding that the harvest is in an eternal space. Sacrifice. There are times when I take every single dollar I have, Naira, and I put it into kingdom. When you see the expression of the kingdom, you will think to yourself, my God, this woman must be swimming in money. The expression looks powerful. But my account looks like Bible verse. 1.2. In fact, not even 200, self. Why? Because we clear everything. The time that the bank, we have to call you and say, are you sure? You are sure? Oh, no. Just to let you know, your balance afterwards would be Mm -hmm. Say, so, yeah, 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 I know what I'm doing. I understand it. Because the people in the room did not understand what the woman with the alabaster box was doing. They thought she was merely anointing an ordinary leg. They did not know that she was connecting her life, her children, and her future to the feet of the one that we bruised the head of the serpent. They did not know that she was buying shareholder space in the wisdom, revelation, and power capacity of the feet of Christ. They did not understand how a human being can connect themselves with the eternal wealth of divinity. Listen to me. There are strategies. And you must understand you cannot only thirst, you must deliver. Because our master is a master of profits. Every time he described himself, he described himself like a businessman that comes back and he tells the accountant, let's balance the books. One day, God will balance the books of these words you are hearing. God will balance the books of every kingdom leadership conference you have attended. God will balance the books of every teaching you have been taught. And he will wait upon the scales of eternity. And he will weigh the amount of truth you heard versus the delivery you gave to the world. And God will ask you, what did you do with my investment? Oh God, I was afraid. Fear is not an excuse for not executing destiny. The Bible records men who were afraid and shaken and they dared to march forward. Do you think that Gideon was not afraid? Who goes to battle with a horn and lantern? Who can you kill with lantern? But you see, every time we press forward, we don't press forward because we have confidence. As a matter of fact, we use only quarter conviction to take nations. Think about what full conviction can do. Listen to me. Kelenukura kaseya. Manto Beki, Bakata, Jevrendu Kabai. By reason of the words that I speak, Muria Kano Sove, I pull you into the river and the streams that I have labored for in faith, in consecration, in prayer. And I say that by the power of that same Holy Ghost, swim in the name of Jesus. Ay, 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 oh, Shaya. The 
least amongst us we carry the efficiency and the efficacy of this river in the name of Jesus there is no river that travels without components there is no river that moves without rubbles and things embedded in it when a river moves it carries everything on its path I decree and I declare to you that by the power of the Holy Ghost you will know how to carry even boulders that look bigger than you when a river flows it will carry a mighty boulder on its path I say to you that in the name of the Lord Jesus people will look at you and say how is it possible but the heavens will look at you and they will say this one has entered into the revelation of the capacities of Christ therefore we no longer labor as men who labor with their own strength but there is grace that works with us a breed and a generation of spiritual women a breed and a generation of spiritually intelligent and eloquent women who speak the language of Zion and understands the communication of the blood a breed of women who know how to entreat the throne and how to back away from the throne a breed of women who understand the calculation of the array of the armies of Zion and they know where to position themselves they don't break ranks they don't break government but within the sphere of their office they operate in all of his fullness in the name of Jesus the Bible speaks about a lazy man he says this kind of man knows how to go out to hunt so that you plan the program is not the definition of strength he says but this man he gains the animal but he does not know how to roast his game many of us don't know how to roast our game you don't know how to convert the buffalo you killed into kilishi dry meat that will satisfy you so there is poverty in our land because we have a lot of Christians who know how to go out and do evangelism but we don't know how to roast the power of a multitude of followers into becoming the voters margin that will change our elections roast your game what do you do with your influence woman how do you convert the strength of your words into what challenges and galvanizes a nation into doing the will of God? Ah, yeah, we need to go back to school. I did not say Sunday service. Sunday service is fantastic. But there is a teaching on how to maximize power. How to translate inherent power into authority and influence. And that we cause kings to balance and say, tell me again what you are talking about. We are there. Father, we are ready. <laughs> Father, we are ready. We are tired of too much talk. There's no need for it anymore. Father, we are ready. Change what needs to be changed. Remove whatever needs to be removed. Make us a generation of people that are not afraid of shame. Are not afraid of failure. Are not afraid of the decisions of men. We are afraid of the judgment of people make us a generation who can stand tall in the knowledge of the fact that there is a river forming on the inside of us your river is all that matters Jesus your river is all that matters Jesus if you take your water from me I am nothing but a patched land fill me oh God I am forever filled I will water not only the earth but I will water the heavens fill me God and even the angelic host will drink and will be satisfied from the fullness of my obedience to you fill me oh God and I will come back to you Jesus with my cup of water that the things that I see and the things that I hope for will someday also nourish you Jesus oh you are the one that fills this broken system and you fix me, Lord, because someday you will also drink out of my cistern. Alanekona sahi. Mando domo koshoko pikaya. Belundi bukutumi akale dekele mashanda. Ayalele kourias. Ayalele kourias. Orekeria kourias. Say that prayer. Say, feel me, Jesus. Teach me how to feed the world. 
Show me how to nourish nations. Break me out of the mediocrity of my background. Remove from me that streak of mediocrity, timidity and smallness that was imputed into me the day I was fashioned in my mother's womb. Give me the eyes of the spirit. Help me to see horizons and places that my fathers and my father's fathers never dared to imagine. Possess my imagination. Make my thinking faculties your playground, God. Ah! We talk about people possessed by demons. But have you seen men like Jehu that were possessed by God? Do you know what it looks like when a woman is filled with the vision and the passion of Elohim? It is upon you right now. It is upon you right now. It is upon you right now. A new language in the spirit. A new translation device in the spirit. The ability to know how to manage rivers. The ability to know how estuaries work. Where rivers connect to seas. For you to be an ecotone. Where two places that should never meet, meet in you. And yet you remain purified and sanctified. Alane Kanosa. Let it come upon a new generation of people. Let it fall upon a new generation of Deborahs. Allah de Kenos Kapai. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Take your seats. Because I need to quickly. Quickly. Nando Sifa. Orekia. Because you see, when you speak about an office, you are speaking about a position of authority or service. Typically one that serves the public. Not one that serves only their families. The church is meant to serve the public. Woman. Serve your generation. See the ends of the earth as though they were right here with you like a single element. Buy the map of the world and bless it as though it's your newborn baby. The way you baptize a child and you do the mean ceremony, name the nations according to the will of God for them. Because indeed, out of your belly is flowing something powerful. Many of us, our waters have come out of us, but they became infants and orphans. Some of them, the enemy stole them because we did not know how to manage what came out of us. When you speak about the office of a woman, the term refers to <coughs> the peculiar spiritual covering that designates and empowers the woman in her unique assignment. The office is like a mantle that serves to promote and to provoke the spirit within you. It is an official garment that is discerned by people and honored and collaborated with by angelic hosts. The office is how you attract the unique allocations of the spirit to do your kingdom assignment. The office is not only eternal and spiritual, but it is a covering and it contains your unique ministry attributes. The office makes you devoted to God from whom this mantle you have received. When you enter into the fullness of the understanding of the power of what it means to be woman, something happens to you. 
The Bible speaks about her. And speaks about her, the name woman is the word Ezra. And Ezra occurs 21 times in the Old Testament. And is often referred to as woman. And it refers to powerful nations. Many times Israel was called Ezra for the help that it gave. 16 times the word referred to God himself as our Ezra. So when the Bible said he will create the woman. He was talking about a helper that was not inferior. But a helper that had the capacity to make creation and everything and man to fulfill its obligation. The same way that your check and your bank account, no matter how powerful they are individually, they can never release money until there's a signature on it. The signature looks negligible, weak, and like nothing. But the moment it comes upon a check, it makes it powerful enough to release wealth over the life of a man. So when you talk about an Ezra, we are not talking about some weak woman. You see, the Bible says for this reason, many are weak, many are sick, many die. Because they don't have the ability to decipher the configuration of the body. You have sitting in your home a powerful tool of battle. And every day you tell it, shut up. What do you know? I'm the man. There's no argument you are the man. But we also cannot argue with scripture. That the divine creator of all things looked at the man. And said to him, you don't have the capacity to fulfill the dominion mandate. You need an Ezra to walk alongside you. Every time Israel came to a point where they looked up to heaven and said, God, you are our helper. Save us. Every time they said, God, you are our Ezra. You are our woman. <laughs> and you are sitting here thinking that your value is determined by how many people tell you you are beautiful. Listen, you are beautiful whether man can see it or not. We do not interpret or define spiritually giving things by human criteria, we define them by spiritual definitions set by God you are beautiful and beauty differ from person to person and from thing to thing for a woman the beauty of a woman is that she enters into the fullness of the Ezra definition that she understands that you pull me into a thing means you have pulled the force of completion into it. Yes. You've been struggling for years to build a vision and to thrust into a place. All you need is to invite me in. Because the Ezra dimensions and expressions within me necessitates that I'm not just a solution giver, but I'm a groundbreaker. Ezra. It also is the Hebrew word Ezra connect go which means to rescue, to save, and is a military term of a protector and warrior. I don't need to explain that too much to you. Somebody said to me recently, P.I.A., you know, I said, fight, fight. She was telling me a situation. She said, I don't like to fight. She said, you know, you, you like warfare. So, and I looked at her, I said, you think the day they gave birth to me is the day they made atomic bomb? <laughs> I don't like to fight. I said, but if you read your Bible carefully, you will find out that fights and wars were not generated by human beings. The Bible says, and there, were, there was war in the heavens. Lucifer and the angels fought against Michael and Co. This is an ancient practice that predates me. And it is the ancient practice by which territories are preserved and territories are expanded. I don't fight because I'm troublesome or because I'm from a dull state. I fight with an understanding that my warfare is what determines the boundaries of my influence. And so when I understand this as warfare, that means going back to school for masters is a warfare. That means rising up and putting up a post. The day the government wants to take down the nation is a strategy of war. Everything that expands Zion and makes it possible for me to establish the dominion mandate of the earth is what I am called to do. Don't tell me that my place
places with food. I will cook not because you told me that tradition demands it. I will cook because the way I add my ingredients is Ezra. I am taking the territory of health for my family. I do what I do from my office, not for my office. The problem with a lot of us is that we don't have a strong sense of our Ezra identity. So we minister for identity. You make friends for identity. Nobody can make you. I build relationships from identity. My identity is what tells me who to spend my time with. My identity is what tells me who to give my time to. Do you understand what I'm saying? So your opinion cannot diminish what has been planted in me. I want to leave you with something before I go. When the Bible says in the beginning with all the Yamayama darkness and void that was on the earth and God began to create God began to create, God began to create and then last last he looked at everything it's not complete until I create man and then he put the Ezra out of man and gave it his own vessel and office hey God listen I'm the conveyor of lead of people of influence it's my ministry but there are people all over the world that believe that my ministry is called Mantle of Deborah and the reason why is because you can bet something out of what you thought was a bigger platform and then the thing that you bet will not come out of that platform and it will go and they go by itself it will not get bigger than the house it came from which is the joy of every father that your seed will grow and be bigger than you but you see a father that cannot recognize when what you have given birth to now deserves his own honorary position and deserves his own emblem and deserves his own voice, positioning and organogram. That father will fail. So it is now there's a point where you, you teach the seed. There's a point where you empower the seed by giving it his own territory. Why did I use this example for you? Because it, the way Mantle of Deborah came out of people of influence and that became like, is, in fact, is, people of influence, they look and they say, ah, fan, uh, give us more change over there. The same way parents will grow and they will tell the children, ah, come and fix the furniture in our house. That's the same way God looked at man. The Bible says male and female created he him, but he pulled woman out of man. Because he realized that this thing needs his own expression. This thing needs his own structure. This thing needs his own organogram community and it needs his own designation. Because of his manner of operation and power, I cannot lump it with all the other qualities in man. Are you hearing what I am saying? I say you carry an office that is recognized by all eternity. That is endorsed by Elohim himself. You carry an image that God uses to express himself from generation to generation. You are not a tool of prostitution, woman. You are the womb of all ages. And you have the ability to bet goodness or to bet death on the earth. Why was it the woman he went for first? Because he understands you catch the womb that you can recreate it for generations. Hey. The man was not enough for the fall. You need the womb to make sure that your, your, your strategy is sealed for generations. This is who you are. You seal the works of gods. You seal the works of kings. If a woman catches a vision, it is established to the third and fourth generation. Hence the abuse of the woman. Hence the policies around abortion. So that you will diminish the most powerful thing about you. So that when you lift up your hand in church, you will think that your life is just you. Forgetting that inside of your loins. Hey. I know who I am. And you need to know who you are. And catch it young. If you catch it young. It will save you from all kinds of useless relationships. Identity is the distillation system of destiny. Your identity is strong. You are able to distill all kinds of things. Activities, projects, people, places. You distill it. 
you know exactly what you ought to do. So in all of God's strategy, he then planted garden. Did the guy ask myself? Person went serious. When no say he gets serpent, when one kill and sins, they fight for a throne. You want to now fight that enemy? Is it garden you go and plant? I would have thought after God built everything, he will release a military might from heaven. Position them all over the earth and tell them, anywhere you see that enemy called Lucifer, take him down. Instead, he went to be planting flower. I saw the angels were looking at him and saying, but uh, Elohim. Sure, you know that Lucifer is still around the corner. He's like, yes, yeah, okay. Planted flower, tree, up and down. He was not sending Michael to water flower. So Michael with his armor and his shield was saying, man, and it's not what, but man, we have to obey him, we have to have faith. But then I understood why. Because the figurative meaning in Hebrew of, bride, of garden is bride. So God planted his bride. In the middle of desolation and brokenness, he took his time to arrange it. The Bible says every tree in the garden was good for food and pleasing to the eyes. Hear me. The bride is meant to be beautiful. You cannot tell me otherwise. There are certain things you must fight for in the garden. It doesn't matter how skilled a gardener you are. If we enter your garden and everything is broken and desolate, we'll call you a poor gardener. He began to curate it one by one. Every part of his bride, he wove it. Decided where lilies should stay and where the palm plants should stay. Arranged me on the inside. But guess where he planted her? In Eden. And Eden means pleasure. As I leave you today, I have other points that maybe I will send to you after. An office is this, an office is that. But as I leave you today, please, I want you to remember what I'm telling you. Don't serve God out of a place of deadness. You cannot fully maximize your office as the bride and as the woman if you don't allow yourself to be planted in pleasure. I'm not talking about you visit pleasure. I'm saying pleasure should be your daily nourishment. You wake up in the morning and you fight for the pleasure of Christ. To be pleased in the word of the Lord. If at any point in time you look at your Bible and it's, it's doing you one kind, stay there. Why? Because you are bright. And the Bible says that you are planted in pleasure. So you see this worship has to pass the realm of struggle and enter into the realm of pleasurable. Because if you are a spiritual person, the higher you go in your connection with God, the more pleasing he is to you. So the height of spirituality is the height of pleasure. Hey, are you with me? Don't settle for anything less than pleasure. Don't settle for anything less than true intimacy, oneness and union, communion with the Lord. Where he sees you and you see him. Why? Because you have a designation. And your designation has authorization. And your authority has structure. And the structure of your authority has the domains where you can distill it. Allow yourself to get educated once again in the Bible. And when you read scriptures, I beg you, don't just see letters and alphabets and stories. But I need you to see structures and systems in scriptures. I need you to understand what it means to carry government. Because for every time you embrace the governance of God, you are painting the story of God on the earth. God said to Cain, Cain, sin is crouching at your door, but master it. The word for master is the word mashal. But it's also the same word for government. And it's also the same word for story. Woman, I know that there are many pressures against us. But every pressure is an opportunity for mastery. Every darkness is an opportunity for mastery. Every temptation is an opportunity for mastery. If Eve mastered the temptation of the tree, she would have become the master of the one that tempts at the tree. She wasn't qualified to eat of the tree of life anymore. 
Because she felt that the opportunity for mastery. Don't fail. You are not Eve. You are a woman. Because every time you master, remember the word mashal. You master how to navigate out of trouble in prayer. You master how to find peace through prayer. You master how to make people love you through prayer. You master your voice in prayer. You master how to break the hold of lust and temptation and greed through prayer and the word. Every time you master woman, you are growing in your office. That word for mastery is the word for governance. The more you master, the more the government rests on your shoulders. Everywhere you go, gates will lift up their head. Cities will lift up their head. Nations will lift up their head. Men will look at you and call you weak. Why? Because all they see is a woman struggling for mastery. But what the heaven sees is a woman that carries government. And for every time you grow his government, you tell a story of the eternal, everlasting God. So Father, I ask, really spiritual, governmental storytellers in this room. People who will tell the stories of your throne. People who will tell the stories of your heart. People who will contend to be a main character in the story of creation. People who would establish themselves in the pleasure of your communion. People who understand that they stay in an office and they will own their designation and glory in the boundaries of your wisdom. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.